Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We're going to give it one more go. Uh, cool. <laughs> start out loud and then drop out low. Perfect. Okay. That's all good. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in to the WBM Podcast. This is one of your boys. It's your boy, Merck. You already know who this is. It's your boy, x Fab. Here's your boy, Tico in the man. In the man. 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 <laughs> Guys, we have an amazing show lined up for you this week. We have... You may know him from Mihawk from One Piece. Or Gentle Criminal from My Hero Academia. Or Roland Chappelle from Food Wars. We're talking about the one and only John Premion! <laughs> <laughs> guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait to get this one started, so we're not going to wait anymore. You guys ready? I am ready. Let's go! Yeah, we're getting better at this, guys. We're getting better at this. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have John Grimmy on with us today. John, go ahead and say hi to the people for us. Hi, everybody. How's it going? Thanks for having me on, guys. I wanted to, man, I wanted to go get my drumsticks and just start. Thank you. Jamming <laughs> on with that we know you, you, know, you like music, so yeah. Going on with that, that tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big time. <laughs> All right, John. So we're going to go ahead and jump straight into it, man. Uh, sure. You've played some I- iconic characters from shows that we know, that we love. Um, you know, I- one of the things I want to ask is, has there been a character in your repertoire that you've done so far that's really like surpassed your limits, that's really make you push yourself? And if so, how did you get into that role? Well, gosh, uh, you know, the-, the toughest roles that you do are the ones that strain your voice, that you go into the studio and you don't know how many episodes you're in for. You don't know mm-hmm. what you're... Uh, what exactly is going to be demanded of you the whole time? You don't know if you're going to have a screaming fit later on or you have to die three <laughs> times or whatever. And, and so, you know, because I do a lot of those characters. I've played a lot of these corporate evil guys who want to take over the world. I played like 46 of those characters in my, in my time. And so, wow. they, and, and, at the, and at the end, the, the, the lead character has to kill you like three or four times because you keep shape-shifting into a bigger version of yourself. And, now you can't kill me. And this so is not my final form. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. And there's so many of that. There's so much of that. And so you have to, the director has you just do these death yells over and over and over again, stuff like that. Just anything that's tough on your voice is, is really challenging because it's your instrument, of course. And so, but emotionally, I don't think so. I think emotionally, the toughest role I ever played was something a long time ago where I was a, a father of a young girl named Corral. It was called Phantom Memory Corral for ADD films. And I had to, just be really emotional and cry a lot. I just could be very, very distressed all the time about the state of my daughter because they wanted to, the government wanted to use her for experiments. And she, you know, Ooh. she held the key to all these, you know, deep stuff, you know, you know, the drill. And, and so yeah. I, 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 I was, yeah. exactly. I was the dad just going oh, all the time. And that, that was oh. a little tough because if right. you, you know, you walk into an anime studio and sometimes, you know, at least in the old days, as they say, I've been doing this for about twenty. I've been doing this for about twenty five years. I, I auditioned right. in the late nineties for ADV Films, which is now Sentai, and mm-hmm. then in the mid two thousands, I met uh, Mike McFarland over at at, uh, at Funimation, mm-hmm. which is now Crunchyroll, and we started doing One Piece. And we started recording other stuff like that, and um, you know. It, it was so different back then because every, you know, anime was on VHS for one thing. You had to pick right, your right. sub or your dub. You only got four episodes per tape. You had to fast forward and rewind. You had to pick either your sub or your dub. And it cost a lot of money. And today it's like 10 bucks. You can get all the high dive or crunchy roll or whatever you want. Just download yeah, as it as soon as you like. So when, the other big difference is that when we went, when we used to go to these uh, studios, the entire the entire show was already had already run on Japanese television, mm-hmm. and they were just going to do the American dub of the thirteen or twenty six episodes, what have you, twenty four. And so the director already knew exactly how many lines you were going to have for the whole series. You're in episodes three, six, seven, twelve, and then you die three times in twenty four. <laughs> so let's. Uh, so you'd walk in and you you. It's like a it's like a cold reading. You would you wouldn't know right. what the show was. You wouldn't know what the character was. You walk in and you kind of go, okay, who's this guy? And what does he look like? Let me hear the Japanese actor. And if you're if you're not on it, I mean, that's what goes on the Blu-ray. That's what ends up right. on the DVD. That's what ends up yeah. on the show. Right. So it's it's a challenge that it's challenging every time that way as an actor. But it's really fun at the same time right. because there's sometimes in a way there's no pressure. It's like I don't know what this is, so I'm just going to walk in and do it and have a good time and see what happens. And that's sometimes that's the best way to to do a to do a right. role that's it's fun that's that way cool. yeah and so with, yeah, yeah. sorry about that i was no, gonna ask a question so you have experience in, in code reading right where does that experience right. come from like we we had the our system did a little bit of research here uh you have origins in juilliard's where you started with theater mm. and so on and so forth right right i've been a stage kid my whole life so i, I studied theater when i was a kid 
Um, I went to a high school for the for performing, performing arts here in Houston, where I live. And then I went to yeah. Juilliard for two years. I got cut from their program. They used to cut the class down. So I didn't make the cut. I was 20 years old. I didn't know what I was doing. It was like Shakespearean training. And I was like, Dirt? I don't know what I'm doing. So um, <laughs> really, so we, uh, so yeah, when I, when I, I tell people all the time, because the question we get all the time at conventions is how do I become a voice actor? How does somebody get into the field? It's very competitive right. these days. It's, it's so much more mainstream than it used to be. And, um, and there's no, re there's really no one good answer to that because it's different for everybody. Some directors go to plays and they see people and, and they say, Hey, I liked your voice in this role in the play. Have you ever auditioned for anime? Boom. They get an audition. Sometimes oh, they wow. send in an email to the company and they find out about this. We just happen to be auditioning for this right now. Do you have a demo reel? Somebody hears it at lunch. They go, Oh, I like that. Let's bring in. I don't know. I don't know. It's different for everybody, for every director and every studio. So you can't really give one straight answer for it. But one thing we always tell people is it's all about acting and not about voice. Voice is the icing on the cake. Oh. If you, if you, if you say, Hey, I can do all these imitations. I can do all these accents and voices. Yeah. Well, so can a lot of actors. Right. And yeah. what, what different, what's going to differentiate you is your acting experience is your ability to go in immediately to our improvisation skills are really important. Mm -hmm. Get with your friends, do school plays, goof around, do podcasts, do skits, <laughs> do, Whatever, okay. seriously, whatever gets your creative juices flowing so that if you were put into a studio and said, okay, go look at this guy. What do you think he sounds like? What do you think his emotion would be in this moment? Here's your situation. It's like an improv class. It's like an improv right. exercise. Mm -hmm. And the more you're comfortable with just going, well, let me reach into my trick bag and see what I got. Oh, you want that? I could do that too. Oh, I, I could try this, try that. And you dial it in with the director until it sits well and until it works for a sound of the voice, for a feel that they have, for kind of a yeah. mood that they bring, right? Their vibe. Um, yeah. So acting skills are just, it, it all comes from being a stage kid for me. Um, and it's really surprising because I meet, um, maybe I'm just an older dude, but I mean, I, I see these younger, this younger talent coming up and they haven't had as much acting training or and they just kill it. Oh. And I'm kind of going, where did you get that? Where, where are you going Crazy. to get these you know, what do you do on the weekends to get these skills? How are you, how are you, how are you doing this? But that's what it's really all about. If that answers your question. Uh, Absolutely. Sort of, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about that for me. That's what's that's worked awesome, for me. Man. I love that yeah. John simply for the fact that I'm an aspiring voice actor. It's something I want to mm -hmm. do. I've been mm -hmm. getting compliments for a, for a few years in my life now of, Hey man, you got a great voice. Do you do radio? Yep. Do you do this, et cetera. And I'm like, ah, it's something I, it's a pipe dream for me, but after going to conventions and meeting voice actors, the, the constant thing, like you say, is acting. It all falls on acting. It, it gives you Absolutely. a range of a character to pull from. It gives you something to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it helps you lock into that emotional character. Like you said, you know, crying is one thing that not a lot of people can just do in there and get the tears flowing so naturally, you know? Right. So, right. Or at least, yeah. you know, some, at least for a voice actor, you can at least sound like you're crying. You don't right. have to look like it because no one can see. But yeah, but it's the same thing. I mean, if you can, it's, the more emotion you can pull up and the more life experience you have, the more of an emotional well you have to pull from. Mm -hmm. And you're not afraid to do it. You're not afraid to feel vulnerable. You're not afraid to fall on your face. You're not afraid to get it wrong and try it again. Wow. That's all the acting training will pull that out of you every, every time. You know, the good acting training will and good acting classes and even the bad ones. I mean, you, even if you go to some acting training that you don't like, you probably had an experience or saw somebody or something inspired you. You know what I mean? And so any experience you can get with that is, is invaluable. Right. Is there any yeah. like a rituals or practices you do before you go out there in the recording booth? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like one of those jerk actors. Well, I get in my car and I drive to the studio, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, but that's that sometimes, um, not really. It, it depends. It, you know, um, I like to go in first thing in the morning and, and especially, mm. especially during COVID, I, I, I want to go first thing in the morning because there's no better way to get sick than to walk into a booth that someone was just in screaming. Pretty so, good. you know, good so I was, I was really wary about that. And so I kind of started um. going early in the morning. And so, but sometimes it, it depends on the day you're having it really, you know, you got you got to watch it. You got to be able to kind of go, you know, just clear the mechanism and, you know, it's, it, you just get into it. You, I just try to go in there and have fun. I just try to, Hey, we're just going to go have fun. We're going to have an exercise. We're going to see what we come up with. We're going to watch an anime. It's going to be cool. It's going to be a new experience. And I just try to stay positive about it. And then, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes you walk in there and there's a character who 
wow, I got to do this. And I got to, I got to yell at this. I, I went in the other morning and I was like, okay, I'm a little tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep. I'm just going to, I'm going to trudge through. And, and it was for this new movie that, that is about to come out. It's called Tunnel to Summer. Okay. Um, it, <clears throat> I played, yeah, I played, I played the alcoholic father of the lead character. Oh. And the first thing he's got to do, like 9 a.m., John Swayze's directing it, and he goes, okay, you're drunk, you're in your house, you're about to scream at your kid and tell him that you wish he it was uh, him that died instead of the... And you're like, oh, my God, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 So that was, that was, that got dark really fast. So I had to kind of go, you know, and you know what? I said, okay, what can I do? I can use the fact that I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. I'll <laughs> use that. So, oh, wow. I let that affect my voice. I let it affect my mood. Grr, you know, I was grumpy about it. Just tried to let whatever feeds the moment get into it. And I think I can't wait to see that movie. I hear it's coming out like next Friday. I want to go check it out. Yeah, November third yeah. is dropping very, very soon. They and just, they just premiered. The theater. And after mm, they just finished, premi- oh, sorry. And after you're finished no. with any role, is there any role like post character? Like, I kind of wish I did that different. Like. I should have done. The oh little sure. Bit. Oh yeah. But so, I usually don't notice it until I watch it way later on the. If you know, I don't watch a lot of anime. I, I, there's not a lot of time. There's there's uh, to I mean, especially something like One Piece. Believe it or not, <laughs> I'm trying to get into One Piece anime right now because I've I know I know certain <laughs> things about the story. I know certain things about this and that. We're getting a lot of One Piece love from the. From the pandemic, people binged it uh, on lockdown. People are really into the uh, the Netflix show as a hit and everything. So I'm saying, you know, I really need to know more about what I'm talking about. I understand my character, and yeah. I understand what I remember about recording my character. But I want to I want to get more into this. I don't want to go to a panel and somebody goes and and go, "What's a devil fruit?" And everybody's like, "Dude, come on!" Oh, so man, yeah. I, yeah, right. That's happened before. I mean, you know, sometimes you you know you walk into a panel and you, you do a, a one piece panel and you just know your character's arcs, but you don't know anything deeper than that. So I'm trying to get into it. And uh, it's, it's been, it's been a challenge. So I don't watch a lot of anime, but the stuff that I do watch, sometimes I'll hear a line and I'll go, mm, I want to go re-record that. I wish I could, I wish I could redub that line or that line. The accent wasn't exactly like it is two episodes later. You know what I mean? That's the, part the- of the, that's part of the risk of of going in raw and just recording something. Sometimes what you do in the studio is you you record the you find a voice, you record the character, and then you really get in the zone. And by the end of the session, it's got a certain it's sitting in a certain place that it wasn't when you started. So you have to go back and hear the first lines and make sure that they sound like the last lines. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> it but might start in a certain lucky. place in your nose or in your throat, but then when it gets to the end of it, you've got to go. Wait a minute. We need to go back and make sure that that worked uh for the rest of it it takes some so, time to lock into the character right yeah yeah sometimes yeah you know sometimes speaking of locking definitely. into your characters I, I, something i love that you that some of your one of some of my one of my favorite things that you, your characters have is the mm. accent i love the oh, accent. Cool. Man, you've, got, you've got british you've got english you've got australian you've got country <laughs> you've got french like where did you come up with these things, man? You know, I was, I've always been, I've always been a kid. When I was a kid, I did impressions. I started doing impressions of like people I saw on TV and sitcoms. I started imitating the faculty at my school and I would get in trouble imitating the teachers. I was that kind of kid, right? I was kind of a class clown. And it's funny. People have asked me before, how do you do accents? And everybody, if they try, can do some kind of accent or can at least change their voice a certain way. Like I'll come mm-hmm. up to somebody and I'll go, Okay, do a, you know, somebody asked me that at a convention. I said, okay, I bet you can do a Texas accent. You got an uncle or something? They go, yeah, okay, imitate your uncle. Oh, kind of talks like this, no kind of. I say, okay, how'd you do that? And they go, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> there's something, right? There's something between the brain and the vocal cords that just, yeah. I don't know. And, and it's funny about me. I don't read music, but I'm a musician, but I do it all by hearing. I'll oh. memorize something or I'm a stage actor and I just memorize my lines by listening to them over and over on a recording. I'm oh, wow. all about learning by watching and listening. I don't, I don't read, I don't do the other process. It's not that I couldn't do it. I've never tried it. I just know that that's my jam. That's what I, that's how I, uh, that's how I learn things. And I, I, so I don't, yeah. So I don't know how to answer that question really. It's like, I've, I've just always done accents and some accents you have to learn. You have to, you have to learn some dialect. You have to get some dialect coaching. You or you got to watch a lot of movies. And when mm. I grew up, I was listening to Monty Python records as a kid, just all the time, watching Monty Python. I was yeah. a huge fan. 
So I thought, okay, I, I know how to do a good British accent. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then um, when I was in high school, these British exchange students came to our high school and I said, hey, oh, now. watch this. I'm going to impress them with my British accent. <laughs> no. So <laughs> they said, and then they were like, uh, that first half of your sentence sounded like it was from Liverpool. Then it went kind of South England. And I was like, oh boy, I don't know oh. what I'm doing. So yeah, right. So, so not perfect all the time, but then, then some other times you, you can. All the actors from Monty Python, like each one's from a different region of the UK. That's right. That kind of That's right. Yeah, 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 right. So it gets mixed up in my brain or something. But yeah, <laughs> I've just always, I've always enjoyed doing accents. And I like doing accents for anime roles because then you're not so easily recognized. If you hear really? a lot of my roles, you can watch my, you could probably look through all the corporate dudes that I've done and they pretty much sound like my voice or some variation of my voice mm -hmm. or my variation of my voice with a little bit of smarm added to it or something like that. And a lot of them sound the same. Swayze will tell you the same thing. A lot of voice actors will tell you the same thing. Like if you look hard enough, you can match these up and they sound like the same guy. But they look so different that it doesn't matter much on the anime or you're not watching them back to back. So it doesn't matter. But I like to go in and sound different every time. And I don't like it when I go to a studio and I go, hey, what does this guy sound like? And I go, oh, just you. That's why we can't. I'm like, no, you know, because I don't want to sound like me all the time. <laughs> no, so, man, absolutely. Uh, yeah. But I, I love I, doing Food Wars because my family is French Cajun. So the name Grémillon, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh, so we're all from, you know, Cajun, Louisiana. So we all have, we all can have Cajun or French accents if we want to. And my, my parents know fluent French. And so doing that accent was easy because I listened to it all the time. And I love that accent and I oh. like British and I like, and some of them I've really had to study. Australian's really tough. I can't, I still can't do Australian perfectly. Um, uh, let's see. Um, what is the other? Yeah, British is British is easy. That seems to come a little more naturally. And Gentle was a lot of fun to do. He's like a masterpiece theater host, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I enjoy you it a lot. You just see a character and say that's his accent. Like you uh, know, you don't you don't always do that. I did that with Gentle big time when oh, I auditioned for okay. when I auditioned for my hero. I, I heard about my hero and I I knew Colleen Clinkenbeard, who is the director. I've known her because she directed me in Black Butler. And I was British in Black Butler too, by the way. Oh, so um, it's like it's like typecasting or something. But I, <laughs> I I sent her an email and I said, "Listen, I, I really I'm hearing all this about my hero. I hear it's such an awesome show. I'm starting to binge it. I'm starting to watch it. I just want to put my name in the hat, man. If if there's something you think I'd be good for, please let me know." And she sent me the sides for Gentle. And as soon as I saw Gentle, look, mustache, teacup. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm That's sorry, teacup, the guy's man. British. Come on. He, he's got to be British. I, I can't. I'm not going to be able to look at him and say a line without going, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, but said, the fact that, she, like, his character just, he couldn't contain himself about tea. And that's how he reveals himself to Deku. That's right. Like, that yeah, was right. one of the funniest things to me, man. That's right. That's right. That's right. He just can't. Yeah, he's a he's a goofball. I love Gentle because he's the writing on that show is really awesome. The writing is really is really so full. It's like all those characters who even you think the sidekick guys are not going to get a day in court. They get their episode here or there. They get to shine on one episode yeah. or, or something or other. And it's that show's always got surprises. And Gentle's sure. really cool because <clears throat> um, this is my soapbox about Gentle. I tell everybody this. <laughs> is that some some people some people saw that that season they saw overhaul it was really scary with overhaul and it was really intense and after that is hawks and endeavor and it's really intense and in the middle is like gentle and la brava on youtube with some tea it's like what's going on here and they they said this is filler man i don't like this this is goofy this is like and i think they said he gets some hate and i understand it because they, they're kind of like this is a this is a really big show i want some violence he's not violent he's a villain but he's not violent he's not hurting anybody <laughs> what uh, what's going on here and so i think i don't think that's what his story is about you know i i tell people gentle is this guy who he wanted to be a hero he really had some dreams and he just couldn't make it work he kept failing right. over and over and i tell people at conventions at panels i go who's who can relate to that everybody raises their hand we've all we've all been to where we try to do something and it doesn't work and we're, we're we wish we were somebody else right we envy somebody else and we wish everybody has that too we've all had that we've all been there and he's so down on himself and he he's so he's so insecure and he and he's had so many failures that he gets to the point where he goes you know what i'm not going to be able to make a difference in the world or make my mark on the world unless i'm somebody else 
Mm-hmm. It's like, that's deep. That's like really sad. That's, and there are people like that in the world. There are people who sure. go, I don't like yeah. myself. I wish I were someone else. I'm just not secure as myself. I have to put on this whole face. I have to put on this whole, uh, this whole, um, you know, other th- thing on the front that, 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 that is, uh, that's not me. Yeah, and, deep, and he's do a facade. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. And he's, and he's <laughs> doing that. And furthermore, he's doing that on social media. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Everybody does that on social media. Everybody gets on social media and goes, my life is perfect. It's a big parade of joy and I never have a bad day. Some people do that. Some people go, and a lot of my friends and a lot of other young people at conventions are talking to me. What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to be? I want to be a voice actor. I want to be a cosplayer. I want to be a musician. I want to be that. But I'm not really blowing up on social media. Mm-hmm. So they think if I'm not viral on social media, social media is everything. If I'm not, if I'm not viral, I'm a nobody. If I'm not this, I don't have any talent. And I call BS, right? It's like <laughs> you're, if you, don't get me wrong. If you go viral, rock on. That's great. If people give you a thumbs up, that's fantastic. But you can't make the mistake of going, my self-worth as a person, my talent, and my internet popularity, they're the same thing. No, they're two totally different things. Facts. So I always yeah. tell people the whole lesson of Gentle's arc is that. It's like, don't get into this idea that you've got to be somebody else in order to be a hero, in order to be special in order to be to give something to the world that only you can give right that's a huge that's a huge lesson for people today so i go don't tell me this is just filler this is like you got to look deep into that that's it's got some good messages so that's why i always that's what i always tell people i always go look dude this take that's that's a good take you know speaking of gentle criminal he's only in a few episodes but he's got such a big following um, the first crazy. time I met you, uh, oh, you signed I signed it. Yeah. I signed it. And we got okay, to meet what the, con- the Brava actress. Yeah, La Brava. Okay, which which con did I sign that at? By the way, it was the U of H, like a year ago. I think it was like a Cherry Blossom Festival. Cherry Blossom Festival. Yeah, yep. That was cool. Yeah. That was outdoors. It was yeah. cold. It was really pretty yeah. out. Rico was there. Blue Lock was there. Natalie Rial yeah, was sir. there. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, he's only in a few episodes, and, and he's got a big following. How does how does how does, how does it feel having all that? That's love? crazy. Yeah, that's cr- it's 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 great because that's that's. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this for twenty five years, and there's two characters that I'm very very well known for, and one of them is Gentle because he's in my hero, and one of them is Speedhawk because he's in One Piece. So. Um, so yeah, it was crazy. He's only been in six episodes, and um, and well, are you up on the manga? Are you guys caught up on the manga? Yes, I am. For my hero, I mean, my hero. Okay. I yeah, am. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So I don't want to give spoilers away, but you know, there might be there might be some more stuff coming. We don't know, but um, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, we'll, so we'll leave it out. It's there. great. <laughs> you know, John, something that I, I you say that you know people give it hate because they're like it's an action packed show and it's all action. I want to see more action, but I noticed that's kind of something of a reoccurring theme. Like Pico's actually called that out to my attention. Where there are these highs and these lows, like it gets super duper action packed. We're like a little slice of life, super duper action packed, little slice of life. But I love that slice right. of life because you give it such an interesting take on it. You know, mm-hmm. um, also, also something that we did some research on, we found out that criminals uh, arc was taking place like in the middle of the pandemic. So you had to record some of that at home, right? Yes. Okay. Half of it I recorded at, at, at Funimation when Funimation was, was Funimation. And then the mm-hmm. lockdown shut everything down. And then the other three episodes that I did, I was in my closet upstairs. So yeah. <clears throat> I'm a video editor and I have some software and they didn't have to send me anything. We were able to do it, you know, set it up just like this. Um, just wow. like we set this up. And, and uh, but a lot of actors did not. And Funimation had to step up and they had to send people iPads and they had to send people software and they had to send, you know, tell them what, what to use, do tests with them. Every character in every show, every walla, every crowd, everybody you heard for about a year and a half at Funimation from after March 2020, everybody was recording from their house. Wow. I think a couple of people maybe got to go into the studio, but they shut the studio down. Wow, they just said they said we can't we can't do this so they said how are we going to do it and they just kept it going and they just found a way to do it so the engineers were the heroes they had to like make everything sound uniform and sound the same and sound like it came from the same studio that's really tough yeah, so yeah. That, that was that must have been uh, just the biggest headache but they did it i mean I, I can't tell the difference with my ear watching the last three episodes from the first three no you know i can't i can't tell that. the difference 
were there like any challenges? Obviously, you don't have a a, a, um, a sound editor right then and there. You don't have an audio mm-hmm. engineer. You don't have a director giving you give right. me more, give me less. You know. <laughs> well, you do, like you do, but you did. We did it. We did it over Skype. We did it over Skype or Zoom oh. or something. And the director was there. The dir- you could at least hear the director. Sometimes you could see the director in a small window. Sometimes you couldn't. It depends on how we did it and what software we used and what interface we used. But they were absolutely there. You had to hardwire your internet connection. You had to make sure, do some tests to make sure that you had the right speeds going on. There couldn't be a leaf blower outside or a dog barking or whatever's yeah. going on. <laughs> you had to, yeah, I mean, it was a super yeah. headaches, man. And so, yeah, you had to be very careful about that. Um, but, but yeah, we, we, I think there was even a time when I would record it. It depended on, on what software you used. But I use Adobe Premiere to do editing, so I, I only know that program. So I didn't use an audio program. They, I, I was sent a very, very crunchy, low resolution of the video of the show, and I loaded it up onto my, to my source window, and I hit audio record, and I waited for him to come along, and I recorded it that way. It's so you're kind of playing the engineer a little bit, oh, and yeah. then, then they're hearing it back. You play it back, yeah. then they like it, then we, we did it that yeah. way. And then at the end of the session, I had to export my audio only and send it to them. And then they locked it into the picture. It was a really crazy process. That is so interesting, man. Yeah. It was How weird. long have you been doing the, uh, the, the video uh, editing, if you want me asking? About as, long, about as long as I've been a voice actor. It's about 25 years, 26 wow. years since I got out of college. I went to, after Juilliard, I came home for a couple of years. I decided what I wanted to do. I, I, I played with a band. I did some other stuff. And then I went to UT Film School in Austin. And that's Mm. where I really fell in love with editing. And so, and I've always kind of enjoyed making home movies as a kid and doing that kind of stuff, making, making recording tapes with my friends and being funny and making our own comedy and stuff. So it it kind of fell along the lines of those things that I used to like to do. And so I've been doing that and that's been my day job, quote unquote, for, for the last 25 years. But it's been, it's been shifting a little bit since we've, since I go to more cons and I've got some, a commercial on TV and stuff like that. It, it's uh, I, I do as much voiceover now as I do editing, or maybe even more. So wow. that's that's been great. That's amazing, man. Yeah, yeah it's fun. You know, it's really fun. When you first started in anime twenty five years ago, did you ever think it was going to get this big? Nope, nope. And yeah. I'm kind of glad that I started back way back then because, like I said, that was less pressure. If I if I started if I went to my audition my first audition thinking I'm going to be in my hero. I, I got to bring my A game. This is going to, everybody's going to see this. It would have been a different situation. It would have been tougher to audition. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of glad I, we, we, we got in a long time ago in kind of a ground floor situation where, where it was really fun and we wanted to do a good job of course, but we didn't feel any pressure. We didn't feel the same level of competition that there is today. There's, it's pretty, it's very different. And yeah. uh, I sure didn't know when I recorded Mihawk for the first time that I'm 20 years later, I'm still going to be, we still haven't finished it. I'm going to be like yeah. me and me and Zorro for our final battle. We're going to be in a couple of rascal scooters. Be like, Zorro! Do you recall your first audition? Uh, from the so many you've had, do you recall your very first one ever? Yeah, my first audition was for a show uh, for Dirty Pair. We went in to ADV Films with Matt Greenfield and I auditioned for something called Dirty Pair when I was the boss of Yuri and Kay, who were like the two the dirty pair who were going to solve all the crimes and kick all the butt and all this kind of stuff. And I was just a flustered boss with my, ah, you know, get back here and stuff. <laughs> so kind of a speed racer looking, looking anime. It was really funny. Um, and, and when I, and when I first did Mihawk, I didn't audition for Mihawk. Mike McFarlane had worked with me before. And if I remember this correctly, he just called me and said, listen, I got a role for you. Come up. There were, there were so many roles in one piece. They didn't know, you know, so I went up there and, and I tell this story too. I went up there and I didn't know what voice to give him at all. I looked at him and I said, man, this guy's really badass. And one of the guys for a different studio made him French. And I thought, this guy's not French. But he's yeah, not. Like four kids, yeah. Yeah. But he's not like, what is he? Is he a Spaniard? Is he like this? Is he that? And I didn't think of it that way, but I thought of how intimidating he was and how kind of uppity he was and above it all. And I thought of, I had just seen a Harry Potter movie, and I thought of Professor Snape. Hey, and, and hey I, sounds like Professor Snape, yeah. And I thought, and I thought about Alan Rickman, that kind of voice. And then I just took away the oh, British and oh, kept oh. it, kept it kind of sly in my nose. He's just very sly and above it all. And that's that's more yeah. Mihawk. That's hello, blah blah blah, I'm Mihawk. And, and and so it just kind of morphed into that a little bit. 
And and he, Mike liked it. He said, "Okay, let's go with that. Let's try that." And we just kept doing it. If you if I, I've watched and when I'm watching it now, I watched the first episode where he showed up, and there's a little bit of a difference between some of the lines and so then then it kind of yeah. sits in a certain place. And now if you watch the newer episodes, it's it's kind of leveled out, and he's he's kind of I know exactly how he needs to sound, but it kind of it shifted in a couple of places. But he's mostly up in there. He's in his nose a little bit. He's just yeah, kind of like, I, I, he's, I don't care about anything. I'm a badass. Meh, meh, meh. You know, that's it. <laughs> well, what I really liked about it, you're right, is that like, I know you guys got a chance to go back and redo some of like the, the lines of, you got to say some cooler lines. Yeah. The, the graphic oh, styles. Oh yeah. That, you know, when so we did was... East blue. Yeah. They redid East blue. They did a special version of <laughs> East blue again. Yeah. I love that one because the animation is, so much better and the lines were funnier and so yeah i dig that one a lot that's on my demo reel i love that thing that was, oh, man, that was so good see like for yeah. me like the zoro i'm sorry uh the fact that mihawk is like this huge warlord he is a badass mm -hmm. all the way through and through i'm wondering like the reason why he remembers zoro is because he's like i want somebody to take this mantle i just want to mm -hmm. be able to go drink my wine on my castle and <laughs> nobody with me at this point you know i'm gonna go make a t-shirt that says zoro get off my lawn <laughs> you know, he's just gonna, he's just gonna be. He's just gonna be. The, he's already just this retired guy. He's all sitting in his place. He's all. He's, he just doesn't need anybody yeah. or something. I wonder how lonely he is sometimes. I'm yeah. yeah, but they're gonna be so old when they finally fight again. I hope I'm still around to do the voice. I'm like, is, are we gonna be done with this in <laughs> ten years, five years? I gotta love it that it's going on and on. But man, it's yeah. It's, yeah he's gonna have to throw his sword at him. Yeah. <laughs> you know. and it's sporadic when they call you for me for Mihawks because there's sometimes there's movies and all and, Mih and Mihawks is there for like two seconds but it's an two awesome thing two lines that's says like oh I gotta yep. go yep that's <laughs> it I was like oh I'm gonna be in Stampede hi John bye John oh god man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was just in and out man that's all he ever yeah. does it's great we, we, we were even doing a Galaxy Con live uh, uh, was doing a live YouTube stream with me and Colleen and Lucy Christian, Brina Palencia, and I can't remember the other actor's name. I'm sorry. But um, uh, we were all asked a question like, what do you do to get into character? And they all had these really interesting, mm -hmm. funny answers. Like Colleen Clinkenbeard says, she goes, la, 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 before she says a lot of the lines as Luffy, just to get into the mood. And, mm -hmm. and Lucy said, oh, I just get really mad at Luffy. I go, Luffy. And Chopper goes, Chopper, and just gets her voice there and his work says, John, what do you do? And I say, well, I, I go, hi, I haven't recorded this dude in 18 months. What does he sound like again? Could you play back the last, could you play back the last thing that I did? And everybody's like cracking up going, that's so silly. But every people do that. We go into the studio and I go, I forgot what this sounds like. Cause you do it once, you know, when you're, when you're a theater actor and you do a play, you get the script, you meet the cast, you meet the director, you all show up, you do a table reading. You take your script home, you learn it, you think about the motivation, you everything. Then you do previews before an audience. Then you do it for several weekends, probably if you're lucky. And you really get to know the show. You remember the show a year later. It's in your bones. When you walk into an anime, you're like, I recorded this. I forget it the next day. You do it once and you're done. So unless mm -hmm. you watch it and you're a huge fan, you become a huge fan or you know, you do something with the material, you forget about a lot of it. And and that's what's surprising is when you meet fans, that, that can be that can be awkward because you they want to know, hey, what do you think about the episode where you did this and then you're what do you think his next thing's gonna be? And you're kinda going, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I recorded <laughs> I recorded um I recorded Vampire Hunter D mm -hmm. in twenty fifteen. They took the original movie from nineteen eighty five and they did a redub of it at Sentai. Mm. Matt Greenfield was directing it. He called me and I said, I want you to play this character. And I, I'd never heard of it before. I didn't know about the comics. I didn't know about Bloodlust. I didn't know about the fan base. I didn't know anything about this show. Vampire right. what? I don't know what this is. I walk in, <laughs> I see this this retro 85 anime, and I'm like, cool, man. This is this old retro stuff. This is awesome. So we have a fun – it takes me like an hour and a half, and I'm I'm gone. I go get my dry cleaning. I go get my lunch, whatever, because – it, he's just he has seven lines he shows up and he just he's real stoic he kills vampires and he's out of there if you watch the movie you're like cool if you record the anime you're like done in an hour so i forgot all about it i forgot about it i forgot what it was called i forgot what it, so a friend of mine she calls me i've done some shows with her and she calls she's a big anime fan she calls me a few a, a, about four months later and she's fangirling out oh my god john you did vampire hunter d you guys were i was like vampire what she goes, John. Oh, she goes, John. 
Vampire Hunter D, you guys were you guys are on Blu-ray. You got nominated for a best ensemble cast of a movie. You got nominated for best, you know, uh, lead in a movie. I was like, I don't know what you're talking. I don't know if I'm. She goes, John, Vampire Hunter D. I'm, I'm just kind of after all, I'm just like I'm yeah. not following. She goes, John, you were D, and I went. So I pulled up. <laughs> I pulled up the internet. I said, "Hold on a minute." I entered Vampire, and I immediately recognized it. And I went, "Oh yeah, that." And she's just like, "Dude, do you not know what you work on? Do you not know what you do?" She thinks I'm being this actor, going, "Oh yes, that. I don't care about what I did this <laughs> day." So you know that was pretty embarrassing. But but yeah, just I, you know. But again, it's it's kind of cool when you can record something that you've never seen before. You don't have any expectations. You don't have any pressure on yourself. You're just, hey, this is cool. Let's do this. Let's try it. Uh, that's yeah. when you have the most fun, and you can have some real creative times that way. You know, I had a question for you, John. So you said that yeah. obviously you know that you're a stage actor, um, and one of the benefits, obviously, like you said, is that you get a whole bunch of time, and like finally, you feel like at the last performance, that's your best performance. You're like, I got it in a bag. This is oh, mm -hmm. well, maybe not. Um, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Um, but have you also done like musicals out of curiosity? You say you, I, oh, you know I love you musicals. Music. I, oh yeah, big, big, big musical guy. Tell was, me I was more. A, tell me more. <laughs> I was, I was with a repertory company for about five years, and this is why I never went to conventions in the two thousands. Mm -hmm. From two thousand five to about two thousand eight or nine, for about three or four years, I was with a company that performed downtown here in Houston. They had uh, they were a rep company and all they did was musicals and we did five musicals a year, five or six a year, or oh, we wow. were doing a fundraiser or a gala event or something like that. So we were doing any get your gun in South Pacific and the producers and Jane Eyre and the Scarlet Pretty Pimpernel, cute. all these Broadway shows just uh, just all year round. That's all I did for a while at night. That was my nightlife. Um, and so I never went to conventions for even what my, a lot of my voice actor friends were going to cons in 2006, seven, eight, when they were really picking up steam. And I just, I wasn't going to, any, I didn't start going to cons until around 2017. Wow. Really? I was just busy. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. I crashed. I crashed a couple a long time ago. I heard, you know, <laughs> When, when, you know, I said, oh, my friends are at a con at the Hyatt Regency. Let me go downtown. And they said, hey, how's it going? They said, hey, yeah. come on up, sit at the table. And I, we, you know, did some free autographs and just talked to people. And I said, this looks like fun. They said, yeah. And I went to England. I went, you went where? And, you know, Monica Real was telling me how she flew to England and did all these. I was like, I got to get into this con thing. Hmm. Because I have to try it. I have to, I have to try this. But no, I didn't, start, I didn't start going until very recently. And then COVID put a damper on that. Mm -hmm. So I've been going to more, a lot more cons lately. I really enjoy it. Any crazy like stories from any cons you've done so far? Boy. Crazy. <laughs> not, not, too, not too many, actually, to tell you the truth. I'm kind of, a, you know, I, I, I sit at my table most of the time. You know, I just I just enjoy being at the table and I've, I've done and you do a couple of panels and then you, you know, hang out or I don't go to the rave. I don't get too crazy or anything like that. So not really. Yeah. Um, you, you've, you've had you meet all kinds of interesting folks and, and you and I like what I like the most about going to them is that when uh, when somebody's parents will come up to me and they'll kind of go. I like what you said at that panel and thanks for saying that about gentle or about Twitter or about, I'll, I'll just say, Hey man, don't bug each other on Twitter. Quit being mean to each other, you know, do this all this stuff. And some father will go, thank you for saying that to my kid because he won't listen to me, but he listened to you. Listen to like, okay. Well that, you know, he should listen to you, but that's great. That's cool. I'm glad, glad we made a difference. No, man, that's awesome. Because I was about yeah. to ask, that was going to be my next thing. Was there like ever an interaction that you had with somebody that like really left an impact with you and like there made was, you uh, want yeah, You know what? There was a guy who came up to me at uh, at a con, Anime Fusion, a long time ago in, in 2017. And he said, he said he wanted to be a science fiction writer. And he was thinking about working on these books. And I said, hey, that's really cool. And he said, I don't know, man. He was kind of doubting himself. And I said, man, do it. If you like doing it, do it. Absolutely. Don't give up. Just, just don't get discouraged. Just chase it and then he came up to me two years later and he handed me i've got it in my closet upstairs it's a, oh. it's a bag it's a bag full of four novels that he wrote he wrote all what? four and got them published and i was like yes and he said and and then i saw him two years later and he goes one of them's getting might be getting optioned by a studio to make an anime out of it i'm like you've got to be kidding me so it's a, it's a big success he just wow. he, he, i said you went for it i'm not responsible i'm just saying that he you know he 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 listened to the people who told him to do it 
he didn't yes. give up. And he, and he, I was like, that's awesome. That's the best. Push past your limits. I love that. Oh, man. yeah, <laughs> big time. And, and I like it when I get fan art from people. When people come up to me with fan art and say, I drew this. I drew gentle. I painted it. Here, it's for you. I'm like, what? And I've got a closet. I've got stuff upstairs. It's like a Home fan museum. art area. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't really, it doesn't look good yet. I have to, I have to get it right. But yeah. You're going to get the completion perfect though, man. I, I feel it. You I bet. It. No, you bet. You bet. <laughs> um, you know, one of the other things I wanted to ask you was um, as far as, I blanked on my question. Guys, somebody help me out. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, this guy. Sorry. Is there, is there a character that you, you kind of think, man, I wish more people knew this character or I'm more, I wish more people had watched this anime. You know, my favorite comedy that we ever recorded was called Cromartie High School. Okay. It was, uh, it was about, it was a really funny comedy at ADV. It was about these, these goofball guys in high school who thought they were a cool gang and there were other gangs and, and they were just the dumbest bunch of guys. It's, it's really, really funny. And I played, I played totally against type. My character was bald and really fat. He was like the school goon. He could beat anybody up. But he got car sick a lot, and he didn't want to let anybody know that he got car sick because people would think he was a wuss. And yeah. so, you know, and it's just fun. It's just silly, silly, stupid stuff. And I really, we had such a, we had, we were laughing so much in the studio recording it that we had to reschedule because I couldn't get it all done because we couldn't stop laughing. Oh, it's literally, yeah. it was literally that silly and funny. And so Stephen Foster directed that. He was the director for Ghost Stories, right? Everybody knows okay. about Ghost Stories. Was, yes. he, yeah. yeah, he would rewrite. He would rewrite stuff to you know, kind of. And so some people would go, "You can't rewrite those lines." He was like, "Yeah, I can." He was just rewriting. So it was, it was, yeah, he was a riot. That I wish people knew more about that one. Cromartie. Gosh, I have to get my cheat sheet out. Um, I, bring a, I bring a cheat sheet to conventions, and I say, "What else have you done?" I was like, "Here." It's like a bunch of. Them. I went to, I, I went to uh, <laughs> I went I went to uh I went to um behind the voice actors and and went into Photoshop and took all those little squares and just made a collage and it's like here's here are my characters that I want yeah. you to know about. Yeah. Okay. We, I remember my question now. Oh go ahead. Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so you uh you you play the drums, right? Were you ever yes. in a part of a band? Like Hold on a second. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, okay, the electronic drums are because I'm in an apartment and you can't bug the neighbors. And you're mm. supposed to, I don't want to damage my hearing any more than I did when I was a teenager. My Led <laughs> Zeppelin, my Led Zeppelin rock rock and roll reel kit is upstairs in a closet because uh, I just can't give it away or sell it. It's got too much sentimental, sentimental. value. But, but um but uh yeah i was in a i was in a, that i got that kit also the electronic kit because i was in an 80s cover band for a little while and we just you can dial it in you can like here's my depeche mode kit here's my journey yeah, kit here's my madonna kit here's my bon jovi kit uh here's my whatever and so yeah i was in a band for a little while i was uh, i haven't played in a while but uh but yeah and there's a band that comes into town sometimes they need a sub drummer and so they, okay. they pull me in there we have a rehearsal and we do a couple of gigs and stuff like that. So yeah, I enjoy it a lot. Mostly pop rock. That's you awesome. Know. Man, the eighties, man, 80s that's like night. the best genre, you know, in my opinion. <laughs> that's fun. It's fun yeah, stuff. Yeah. It's good. I like, I like seventies. I like seventies rock a lot. Seventies okay. rock is really fun to, fun to play on drums because, you know, even bands like heart and, and, and Led Zeppelin and all these, they, they have, they had some complex beats. They had some yeah. real deeper kind of eighties was more danceable. You know, it's, it's a little easier to play 80s because there's not too much intricate stuff, but 70s rock is hardcore. 70s rock is is more of a challenge. Yeah, wow, stuff. stuff, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's pretty awesome, man. Mm. Oh, yeah, before I forget, that. before I forget, this t-shirt right here, this is, <laughs> that's Udawari Ramono. It's another lead character I played in Udawari Ramono. We called it Ray Ramono Underwater. And, and uh, <laughs> And that's a really weird show that was uh, that was at ADV for a while, and then Crunchyroll just picked it up again and did some more new episodes because they had a couple new seasons. And oh, wow. this character really? always had this mask. And and this guy came up to me. This was another cool interaction. This guy Spade. I'm I'm giving a shout out here. Spade Designs. They make these <laughs> t they make these anime t shirts. The guy just came up to me and said, "I made you a Uruari shirt here. I made you a Vampire oh, Hunter D shirt here." I'm like. Wow. Nice. He said, give us a shout out. I'm like, I sure will. I've got a new shirt now. Shout I don't have to do this. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Man. There you go. 
And what's uh, what's your current like anime or big animes that you got coming out or anything that you're working well, tu- on? Well, tunnel tunnel to summer is gonna oh, like we said is gonna is gonna open up. What did I just record um, that I can talk about? Um, yeah, because well, sometimes we can't talk about it. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You get, you got to wait until they get it. They make the official announcement. The <laughs> ones I did for the ones I did for Sentai uh, were uh, reincarnated as a sword, and we recorded uh, tunnel to summer, and then we recorded. Something called My Esekai Life, where I played a character oh, yes, named Proud. Proud, no, I played like Proud, movie, I played yeah. Proud Wolf in that one, and uh, Swayze directed me in that. And let's see what else I did. Something called Kaji um, with Kyle Jones. I recorded uh, Reincarnated as a Sword with Kyle Jones, too. And then for Crunchyroll, I finished a show called Buddy Daddies. Um, Buddy Daddies. Buddy Daddies is kind of like a spy family esque kind of show. It's like spy family. Um, Two guys, two hitmen who are trying to raise a raise a kid, a kid, and they don't know what they're doing, and they're killing people. And it's funny. And I played a real ba- I played a real bad guy in that, real bad heavy guy in that, um, assassin type. Um, what else did I do at Crunchyroll? We oh, did hey, the uh, movie that came out recently, Psychopath. Oh yeah, Psychopath, oh, Psychopath yeah. Providence, Psychopath yeah. Providence. That, that was a cool. Movie. To see that was, was a, a while. Anything Psychopath did anything? So it was that was really a cool nice. movie. That was a great. That was a, that was a really fun movie to record. So Caitlin Glass directed that. That was great. So those are the you latest were the big ones. Bad in that, right? Yeah. Sorry, you were the big bad in that one, correct? Yes. Yeah. The, well, the. The, the the kind of men, big older mentor gray haired guy that everybody is like holding down church with everybody else all the bad guys yes yeah 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 <laughs> yeah that's awesome man well mm-hmm. I gotta ask like where can where are people gonna find you at coming up like what cons what conventions would you be attending oh, yeah. yeah. well I'm gonna be at something called Oni Onicon which is in Galveston Texas uh, in a couple of weeks two weeks after that we're gonna be at Anime Dallas. At the Hyatt Regency, yeah. Di- yeah. And, and John Swayze runs that con. He runs a great con, takes care of everybody. It's really fun. A lot of people are going to be there. Gosh, what's after that? We, I gotta, we met I, at Anime Houston a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just did Anime. So much fun. Just did Anime Houston. That was great. Uh, so there's OniCon. There's Anime Dallas. I just did NerdCon. Um, what is coming up? Let me, let me cheat a little bit and see what else. Me. So I don't want to give you the wrong dates here. Let's see. Uh, oh, you Dallas, man? Something called Ichiban Con in Concord, North Carolina, January fourth through the seventh. Then there's Ohio Con. I've never been to Ohio, so it's Ohio Con the nineteenth of January through the twenty first. And um, that's that's what's on the docket right now. And we're that's just going nice. to look to yeah. look forward to twenty. And I hope I hope this is true, but I'm hearing a lot of rumors that Mihawk might get a Funko Pop. Uh, he cool. needs one. Oh, that's really nice. He well, needs one. Signature, man. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. No, he needs one, man. He's. I think all the other yeah, warlords right. have one. Yeah. Have a pop, and so yeah, we got to get, we got to do our boy right. But yeah, I, I'm really excited about that. That'd be really fun. I know that yeah. it kind of got a, like a resurgence because of the live action. Everybody saw yep. Mihawk live action, and everybody went back and wanted to know more about. Absolutely, I get asked a lot about that. Like, what do you think of the British? He's great. That British actor killed it. He was really. He was scary to me. <laughs> I, wouldn't want to, I, I wouldn't want to go up against him. He was pretty good. So, yeah, the live action was I We were really worried about the live action because so many live actions have tanked. And they've just not. Oh, yeah, up, man. They've not picked up steam that people were complaining about Cowboy Bebop or Death Note or whatever. And we thought, oh, please don't make One Piece just look like, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Or like the Cats movie or something like that. So yeah, they, they, <laughs> but it's a it's a hit. They got a second season. We're very excited about it. It's, it's great. huge, it's and again, great. we love it. It's probably one of the. It's like the 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 standard now for what an anime adaptation should be yeah. like. You know. Yeah, we'll awesome. see that British actor like in ten years from now. And yeah, for the yeah. next part. For the next part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, they got their work cut out for them because I mean, I'm only on episode what. 60 something i got past east blue i'm about to go to alabaster or whatever and i'm i'm enjoying oh, it but i'm like you're in for a treat my friend you're oh, in for a treat oh, dude. Yeah. yeah up there yeah uh, putting in mm-hmm. work oh i know crocodile is going to be he's coming i know and and i think as, as far as the manga goes if people don't want spoilers plug your ears but i think the one piece manga is like crocodile and, and mihawk are going to make a big reappearance pretty soon i think they're going to there's cross guild and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff coming up Oof. So, so you heard it here, guys. You yeah. heard it here first. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm right, not here it here first. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've, been, I've been hearing it for weeks. 
<laughs> well, you heard it from Mihawk. How about that, guys? You heard it from there me out go. here. First yeah, class. there you go. go. I'm coming right, back. Well, yeah. John, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode again. Thank you so much awesome. for your time. Where's my music? Thank you, gentlemen. This was really, really great. I really enjoyed this. Thanks for having John, me. John, thank you so it. much for taking yeah, the time man. and having a conversation with us and pretty much give us the insight of what it's like to be a voice actor, someone with you with so much experience in a legendary one like me, Hot. Thank you so All much. right, guys, this has been the WBM Podcast. This has been your boy, Merck. Make sure you guys are following us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, all at WBM underscore podcast. And this is your boy, XFed. You should really listen to us at Spotify, Amazon Music, Apple Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all that jazz. This is your boy, Tico in the Mix. Just got a website, wbmpodcast.com. And then you can always send our topics to one of our social media channels. Again, we're Weedy Banter Media. John, go ahead. You want to say goodbye to us, folks? Bye, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Go to johngrimion.com. It's got a little click on there for all my socials. Go check it out. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Ta-da. <laughs> all right. So we're going nice. to end our recording. So who's your, who's your uh-huh. band?